Hi, I'm Tony. This is Stephen, and this is our dog Rosie. Over the past few videos, you've seen us updating our van and getting ready for full time life on the road. In this video, we get one step further to fan life by progressing with our bed and making upgrades to the lights. We also finish off some last minute essentials in order for us to start doing weekend trips. We're touring around with Rosie and this is our fan build. Been very Floridian today in this wee shirt actually. Floridian? So, summer, summer vibes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Can you bring it some to yeah. us? <laughs> Ready to go? I'm saying. How about what we're doing? What, what are we doing? doing? <laughs> okay, so it's a new day, and yesterday you would have seen us make the little feely head things for Stephen's head and feet to fit into because he's a big guy. Feely head things? Feely head things, we'll call them that. Boxes? What are we calling them? Headboard, footboard? Headboard and footboard. <laughs> yesterday you seen us make them. Except, you haven't seen those yet because they were filmed on a different day. So let's jump back in time through the magic of editing and see how we did that. <laughs> so we're cutting the wood for the uh, boxes for the headboard and footboard for the bed. Um, so I don't have a track saw and I don't think I could really justify the price of a track saw for this one project. So what I'm doing in order to be able to get straight cuts for this is you get your plywood, put it on top of two bins, because again, I'm cheap, I'm trying to do this on a budget so I didn't buy trellises. So I've got two bins, set the plywood on top of the two bins, put a piece of straight wood, a batten I've got, and I've clamped it just the width from the edge of my saw blade to the edge of the saw, and then that effectively gives me a track saw. So now that I have the first piece cut, I've been able to test it to make sure it is going to sort of line up and fit how I want it. And first impressions look really good, yeah. So that's about the right size for, for what we want. After making the outer structure for the headboard and footboard, we began work on the inserts. To do this, Steve measured the inner part of the wooden frame we were using and assembled all of the sides together using a mix of wood glue and screws to hold everything together. So, what do we do next? We're going to uh, insulate the backs of them because we won't have enough space to put proper insulation in. Um, so we need to put some sort of insulation in, otherwise um, our head and feet will be freezing. So we have a wee bit of thermowrap. We're going to put thermowrap on the backs of these boxes um, with contact adhesive and then a bit of foil tape around the outside. <laughs> Don't break them. Should be sturdy, sure I made them. It's on them afraid of. <laughs> we thought that putting some foil under the boxes would be fine, but what we didn't account for was the Northern Irish wind. Is there a cameo here from Rosie? What? Oh, that could have ended badly. Rosie at the window. For whatever reason, my brain wasn't computing that day, so it was Stephen to the rescue. Yes, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Right, so what's first? Just to uh, get a rough idea how this is going to come out, so... Pull that out. Well, that's actually pretty perfect, the size of it. Not much in it, isn't it? No, it's pretty good. Let's try and put it here. Thank you. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Very hard to tacky this, you know? <laughs> Don't remember our attack. <laughs> Having to fight the wind in our attack. Remember the big talking head? I lift it off completely. Hold it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> 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 
Does anybody remember those old Spider-Man web gloves? Leave a comment down below if you're a 90s baby. And then slowly lower it down so there's a slight, oh wait, slide over that. We gently patted the foil down, being careful not to pop any of the air bubbles. Got a twinge? Badness coming out of you? No badness for me. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Like an old bit. <laughs> to secure the foil, we lured all yes. four corners of the headboard and footboard with aluminium tape. Yep. Job accomplished. Happy enough for that. Huh? I'm happy enough for that. That should hopefully keep some heat in. Adding our beams to the bed was an easy enough process, but it was also a bit technical. Stephen measured out the wood to fit over the pre-existing wall brackets of the fan. He then marked the wood where the bolts in the brackets were placed, and using his saw he was able to carve out notches in the wood beam for them to fit into place. When the wood was ready and cut to size, he wiped down the surface and applied strong glue to the beam to keep the wood in place. After this, he reinforced it by adding the IKEA Scorver beams we bought and screwing them into place. Of course, just to make extra sure that they were secure, he decided to test how strong they were to make sure the bed wouldn't collapse under the weight of us both. Legs <laughs> crap. Like put both your arms up. Yeah, there you go. Let's get rid of it. <laughs> kick your legs out. <laughs> Bye. I know. You can't really see that your legs aren't, aren't on the ground. You know? There's a better shot. <laughs> so, as I described earlier on, um, you will have seen that we put in the bed beams, and uh, as you can see, each individual bed beam can take my full weight, um, which is well over 100 kilos. <laughs> um, so what, instead of going onto the metal brackets, what I've done is I've doubled up a couple of wood battens um, and then put the bed beams under them to bring up the height. The idea is that I'm going to make this as flat as possible because the bed slats will match up to here and this will form a box uh, for the headboard and then we'll do the same for the footboard. Now we are going to lose a wee bit out of our window just because the windows were pre-done for us. Um, so we need to frame that out and then need to put a wee bit of window tint in. We've got that as well uh, So once we do the boxes up sort of see where it's going to lie and fall We'll cut out a wee bit of window tint just to completely black out that area uh, Same again on that side and then we can we can build our boxes So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, Do a wee bit of window tint. The reason why we're doing the window tint is because the uh, boxes for the bed are going to come out to a certain point um, so we're going to lose a wee bit of uh, window space and the window tent is just so it looks pretty um, from the outside. When we got the fan, the windows were covered in a translucent film, so they were already panelled for privacy. On camera, when we take away the section of the film, it looks like you can see into the interior, but from the outside of the van, it's actually pitch black. We repeated the process on the other window. You'll notice in this clip that the roll was hanging off and had lost the stick on one side. It would have been relatively inexpensive to fix this and fit a new film, but a hack to avoid this is to use a window or glass spray which creates a new layer of adhesive. It was now time to apply the blackout film to the cutaway section of the window. We measured it to fit the space, we then cut the piece to size. The film was quite fiddly to work with, so getting the sticky back off took quite a few attempts. When we were ready to apply it, we added the solution to the window and stuck it down, smoothing out any air bubbles with a card. We realise at the minute this might look a bit silly, but this is because it's going to be covered up anyways, and it stops that section of the window looking strange from the outside when the box goes in. Later down the line in our build, we'll also frame this window and make it look more uniform. While Stephen worked at the process on the opposite window to finish the job up, I was busy applying even more insulation into some hidden areas of the fan in order to regulate the temperature of the vehicle. Making sure the fan is well insulated is essential for us, especially because we'll be using it for full-time travel. We want this to be our home while on the road, 
and getting it up to standard at this early point in the build saves time and hassle down the line. So before we put the boxes in, um, I was just sort of putting them in and seeing how it was all working out. And what I've discovered is we can actually put in um, a couple more wooden battens, the active spacers, and that allows me to do two things. One of the things it allows me to do is it gives me another point to screw the box into, so another fixing point. But the other thing that it allows us to do is actually put more insulation in behind, which will hopefully keep the, the area of the boxes a bit more warmer. This van is essentially going to be just held together with glue and screws. To be fair, or like before, it was held on by just glue. <laughs> I don't know what I've done, but the wood glue is a lot easier this time to squeeze out. Yesterday it was a disaster. No way. No, come on. Screws will clamp that in the place. Have you got the insulation in here? You do, don't you? I'm not sure. There we go. With the framing for the bed nearly complete, we decided it was time to upgrade our lights. We wanted to change them from warm to bright cool LEDs. So the reason we're actually replacing these light fixtures is because the, uh, the bulbs that were in them were old fluorescent lights and they use an awful lot of power. We're going to put in spotlights that use like not even half as much power as will keep our batteries going for longer. And also because these fixtures um, have plastic on the ends and they're all sort of uh, broken in bits and places. So it'll just uh, make it really nice. So we're just back from B&Q, I uh, got a few bits and pieces we needed um, to cut the holes for the, uh, for the new lights. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the old uh, lights for a template against the wood so I can draw around that and then find the sort of middle points and cut the holes out. We ended up with a cheap hole saw from B&Q and it was actually the only place that we could find this size in stock. However, we wouldn't recommend this particular hole saw because it didn't really work effectively and ended up being extremely dangerous. If you're watching this, please don't copy what you see in this clip. We had to use the saw at an extremely awkward angle and this isn't advisable. As well as this, the cheaper hole saw kept coming loose and we could have easily been injured. If you are going to try this yourself, make sure you have proper equipment and a vest in a good quality hole saw. This was the only one in stock for us, so it was our only option at short notice. Stephen uses tools in his professional career, so he can combat these DIY scenarios safely. We can't recommend that other people put themselves in danger by copying what we are doing here. So once we have them cut out, we're going to spray paint them first, and then pop the lights in, and then pop them on the ceiling. So I'm just trying to uh, make a list of everything that needs done um, for where we are right now, and trying to put them in order of priority. Uh, so one of the things that needs to be finished off is the bathroom but unfortunately because of the way I've done things I can't finish the bathroom off right away because I still need to trim down the bulkhead a wee bit. Once I trim down the bulkhead I need to tidy that up uh, with a bit of wooden trim. I also need to put a shelf in here because we're going to have this as a wee bit of a shelf uh, so that's not wasted space. What we're also going to do is put a wee bit of plywood 
down uh, on the wall between the bathroom wall and the driver's seat uh, to block off the electrics. So that means the electrical panel will have to be coming out and moved, bits and pieces like that. Uh, we also want to insulate in between the dead spaces uh, to get as much insulation as possible. So that'll also need to be uh, need to be done. So we want to be able to use the van in the meantime. So there's no point sort of bogging ourselves down with this while there's still the potential for some sunshine and the potential to get maybe the trip away or two. So we're going to focus on maybe doing uh, finishing off the bed area. So what we're going to do with the bed area is finish off around the boxes and maybe put the slats on. We're going to insulate the wheel arches for the time being. We're not going to box them in. The reason we're not going to box them in is because I'm thinking about maybe uh, over wheel arch water tank. Uh, so there's no point boxing them in just yet. So to get using the van for the meantime, I think what we'll do is we will maybe just put a wee curtain up for the bathroom so that we have a toilet area and get a wee porta potty sort of thing for now. The final thing we needed in order to use the van for short trips was a foam mattress, which we managed to get on sale in August. Starfish. It's actually pretty good. It's actually quite comfortable. Ah. Set the mood. So the gang's all here. I'm here. Stephen's here. And little Rosie's actually making an appearance in the touring around <laughs> with Rosie videos for once. I'm very impressed with this spot. I like it. That's nice. Uh, nice picture we've got. Compared to what we have been having all summer, it's really been the worst summer. <laughs> it's really has, yeah. So I'm thinking, if we get down here, and it's any further, then the only two furries that you're going to see is us in this video. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and check out the rest of our content.